Pink Diamond is probably one of the weirdest videos I've ever worked on and probably one of the weirdest videos I ever will work on. I think for me at least it was more than anything an exercise in just figuring out what the craziest way to express oneself would be while like having this crazy visual concept. The bottles of wine and beer and a dozen cigarettes and, and all the cross dressing and just crazy outfits and makeup isn't really the point of Pink Diamond so much as just all of it. You know, like the overstimulation and the insanity that comes from it and just really wanting to make something super weird. The concept is pretty much as old as I have known Bay, who I worked on very closely with for this video. This is the most collaborative music video I've ever made. So it was definitely a very interesting process. I was really excited about that. I was really excited about how jointly collaborative it was going to be. She sent me these crazy photos she took in like someone's attic and they were just crazy. And I saw these and I was like, this is perfect. You are crazy. Let us do something like this. We both loved Charlie XCX. I mean, who would not? Especially off the heels of Charlie and how I'm feeling now. I freaking love those albums and especially how I'm feeling now. I remember Pink Diamond was a song that when I first heard it I really didn't like but just because I wasn't into those industrial and hyper pop aesthetics and sounds. But there was still something really catchy about it and I think just kind of the, the energy and the bravado and also the darkness of it. I was hearing such great things about it from people online who I thought had weird music taste back then but actually now I know I'm just weird now. Um, you know, over the last year, I just fell really deep into loving hyperpop. And then also just the whole aesthetic in music videos with how DIY it is, the over the top visual effects, and what is like being done right now and what is being put out in music videos from these hyperpop artists. It's honestly way more impressive and way more enticing and way more entertaining than some videos from big budget artists. I think more than anything, we just wanted to have fun making something fucking weird, but you still gotta have a plan. And so we spent a long, long time talking about what we wanted to include. And there was a whole list of things, not that I necessarily want it to be the main feature of the video, but I think one of the most significant aspects of the video is the cross-dressing and all the different outfits. It's kind of like a weird time for a lot of people my age with regards to gender identity and just identity in general. It's like confusing every other day knowing who you are or what's happening. And I'm not saying I even know who I am. The whole rise of like femboys in general and online in the LGBT community, it's just an awesome form of gender expression. There's obviously that part of it and that side of it to wanting to incorporate cross-dressing as much as that but it's also just fun so therefore I enlisted the help of a few of my friends to help with wardrobe and costuming which they very generously did I don't really know what they thought because I didn't necessarily explain what the concept was all that much yeah I mean I was like oh that's interesting like I was like okay you want to wear my corset and wear my skirt that's I was just like hmm What's he gonna use it for? <laughs> I'm glad they didn't ask too many questions. The first time that we actually got around to filming, like the very first thing was in October of 2021. For this first one, I was boring my friend face clothes, and so I didn't want to hold on to them for an unnecessary amount of time. And also knowing how filming goes, any of the projects I have worked on, there will most likely be large gaps of like entire weeks before like we finish filming or like film the next part of something. So I knew that like whatever we were doing, we needed to do as much as we could with this costume. And so that was kind of what ended up happening. We really didn't get far at all. I think we kind of underestimated how much needed to be filmed and that's kind of the problem with not planning again like you can just be like let's improvise let's have fun but if you don't have a plan you're just kind of kind of fumble around and but that is the most fun but it can also just be the most time consuming. I'm gonna buy with a project like this where it's just for fun it's like there's no profit to be made or anything it's like that's okay it's okay to just goof around and have fun and I had a lot of fun getting dressed up and putting the makeup on and everything like I had never really actually dressed up like this before I have many times since but I remember the first time it was kind of trippy it was kind of weird but it was also like really euphoric and liberating just seeing how I guess weird and not myself I looked and then going up and filming in a shower, eating pizza. <laughs> I won't lie, it's kind of a meme. It wasn't meant to be like that necessarily all the way. It just kind of ended up being like that. <laughs> okay, wait, should I film the pizza box now? Yeah, maybe. And in many ways, also very grimy and disgusting, which I can't necessarily say was always the intention. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that and get away with that because we did pretty much that first time film me vomiting into a toilet like 15 different times. <coughs> Whatever.
but also like I said I'm very inspired by Brockhampton I remember like months before that Brockhampton had released a new album with that their lead single for it buzz cut featured in the music video Joba from the band throwing up and I remember seeing the behind the scenes and he threw up for real and I thought this is gonna be so cool I'm gonna throw up for real too that's gonna be so cool so I got some milk that was off and I put it into a glass and I put food coloring in it and, and dyed it and mixed it around oh wait stop I was like, why am I doing this? I don't, I don't actually want to vomit. And if I vomit, we only got one shot to get this right. Anyway, though, I did still have the milk and it was off and it was rotten and I was drinking it and I drank it multiple times. I didn't swallow ever because I would end up spitting it out anyway. But for some reason, I put myself through the pain of putting rotten milk into my mouth. It did not taste nice whatsoever. It was pink. And we filmed that shot like so many times, like way too many times, like too many times to include in the actual video. You know, in the moment, it just seemed like something that was really important. What can I say? Following that, we went and just tested out some stuff on green screen and again, just had fun. Eating the banana. I don't remember where the banana came from. There was so many bananas. They wanted to throw the bananas at me, so I just, you know, I went into one of the bananas, I ripped into them for real. Then they started getting thrown back at me. Multiple banana skins. <laughs> By the end of all that, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Could not go on, so that was the end of that. I returned to Faith's clothes thereafter, and I did think about maybe asking whether we could use them again or not. But by the time it came around to us filming again in December, on my last day of my grade 11 year at high school, we just didn't really orchestrate or get around to getting the corset again. And instead, we were going to use whatever Bay had. She said she had a corset. She didn't. But it was okay because there was a navy sailor army outfit with the sail with the navy hat and everything. I don't really know. When we were also trying to figure out what makeup we were gonna do, we tried looking up some inspiration, some something to base it off of. In the moment, they for a while was talking about really wanting to do a clown look, and when I heard this, I was like. That's fucking terrifying. This is totally Bay's vision though, so I wasn't gonna contest it that much, but it just, you know, basically just came round to let us do Joaquin Phoenix Joker. That is the look. This is going to oomph up the level of meme of this video and just raise it to a higher echelon of, of quality. <laughs> And, and commentary, make it just a lot more artsy and, and uh, people then would take it more seriously, you know, that it's, it's not goofy, it's layered. That was a terrifying process, like lathering my face in all white, putting the Joker makeup on. I mean, it's an iconic look. We filmed this part at school. One of the reasons why I wanted to do it at school is because we had tons of projectors there, obviously, because of the classrooms. Really wanted to kind of capture that whole vibe, the whole lockdown vibe that the song is going for, because we needed a through line, you know? We needed something to narratively carry this music video so that it wasn't just complete nonsense and incoherence. But the through line was going to be about isolation because that's what the song and much of the album by Charlie is talking about. And so we were gonna put like this footage of like nightclubs and concerts and parties. Do a little Eric Andre moment, let me in, you know, like on the projector, on the whiteboard, like let me in, let me in, you know, really, really wanting it and, and just going for it. Get me in, get me in. That, that was the vision. That was the vision for that one. Um, it might have looked a little bit goofy. Uh, considering what I was wearing, uh, it couldn't It couldn't have gotten, you know, I think it just worked. It couldn't have gotten more goofy than it already was. So what can I say? Perfect. What we put on the projector next, pro probably the best idea of the day to put Joker 2019 on the projector itself. Just as kind of like a intertextuality, you know. <laughs> Joker 2019, an integral part of Pink Diamond and Pink Diamond's message. We tried out a few other things like some really loud massive explosions, which I think they, they were too loud. Incorporating some weird lighting, flashing, epileptic strobe lighting videos that we found on YouTube. That stuff gave me a headache. I'm honestly surprised I did that for a whole two minutes looking into the light. I swear I was ascending, but not in the good way. I'm gonna vomit. And then we caught it a day. It was it was a weird way to end my penultimate year of high school, for sure. Let's see if you have a prosperous year next year. Don't think I will. 
I think it'll be terrible. And thereafter, we went to the mall together with the Joker makeup still on. That was cool. That was funny. Going to Toys R Us, Burger King, you know. We hit all the stops with the Joker makeup, you know. It's, it's, it was like a bit of a Pink Diamond Joker World Tour, what can I say? I felt great. <laughs>